this video, the second video in this series on trigonometric identities, we're going to look at identities that involve compound angles. That is the sum or difference of two angles or two numbers inside a trigonometric function. So they're called compound angle formulae. Let's have a look at exactly what I mean. So the first identity is that sine of x plus y or x minus y equals sine of x times cos of y plus or minus cos of x times sine of y. So when we have sine of x plus y or sine of x minus y, so two numbers inside the function being added up or one being subtracted from the other, we can rewrite it as what we have here on the right hand side, sine x cos y plus or minus cos x sine y. So if it's a plus inside the sine on the left hand side, it's a plus on the right hand side. And if it's a minus on the left hand side, it's a minus on the right hand side. So it looks a bit strange because it looks like, well, we've actually made the thing a little more complicated on the right hand side. Like we've certainly made it longer, but you'll see in the examples we do that this can actually be useful and it will actually allow us to solve problems that we otherwise wouldn't be able to solve. So another compound angle formula is the one for cos. So cos of x plus y equals cos x cos y minus sine x sine y, or minus or plus sine x sine y. So it looks similar, but it's, it's a little bit different as you can see. And this time the minus and plus on the right hand side are the other way around. So what that means is if it's cos of x plus y, then it's cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. If it's cos of x minus y, then it's a plus on the right hand side. So if you have a plus on the left hand side, you have a minus on the right hand side and vice versa. And finally, there's one for tan, which is the most complicated looking, I suppose. We have tan of x plus or minus y equals tan of x plus or minus tan of y divided by 1 minus or plus tan x tan y. So hopefully, if you're using these in an exam, you have them on a formula sheet. If you don't, you have to try and remember them. Generally, they'll either be given on a formula sheet or you'll be doing them as part of some assessment, not in an exam, and you can look them up. So it's good to have them to hand. So with this tan one, remember that if it's a plus on the left hand side, it's a plus on the right hand side in the numerator, and then it's a minus in the denominator and vice versa. So if we have a minus on the left hand side, we have a minus on the right hand side in the numerator, but a plus in the denominator. So it's a bit tricksy, but it's okay. So we're going to put this in a box and we're going to try to do some examples. So example one or example A is find cos of 7 pi over 12. So we've got an angle measured in radians here. If you're not sure how to convert between radians and degrees or what radians are, there are some videos in this series on that topic. And then B find tan of minus 15 degrees. So let's try A first. Obviously we can assume that we want to rewrite this as the sum of two things since we're trying to use our compound angle formulae and it's best if it's the sum of two things that we can figure out, i.e. we know what the sign and the cos of those two things are. So we're going to write it as cos of 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. So this would be cos of 7 pi over 12. Now we can use our compound angle formula to break it up. And we get, well, first of all, let's uh, simplify these two fractions. So 4 pi over 12 is pi over 3 and 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4 if you simplify them. So now we use our compound angle formula to break it up and we get cos pi over 3 times cos pi over 4 minus, because it's a plus inside the cos, so it's minus sine pi over 3 times sine pi over 4. So I've just used the second of my compound angle formulae identities. Now the reason you can now see so far it looks like why are we doing this? We're just making the problem longer and more complicated. We don't know what cos of 7 pi over 12 is off the top of our heads and we can assume that we would only get asked this if we didn't have a calculator. If you had one you could just put it in and find out what it is. So let's say we don't say it's an exam and we don't have one. We can figure out what cos pi over 3 cos pi over 4, sine pi over 3 and sine pi over 4 are using our exact triangles which is something we looked at in an earlier video. 
So if you remember that video, or you can go back and watch it, or if you remember it, you can write down those triangles and you will end up with cos pi over 3 is a half times cos pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2, minus sine pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2, and that's times sine pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2. So this all just comes from our exact triangles. I'm not going to go over them again in this video, but there is a video on them. And in that video, I think all the angles are measured in degrees. But again, if you convert those angles that are measured in degrees to radians, you would be able to use those triangles to find the values we have here. Because pi over 4 is just 45 degrees and pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So we end up with this. Now we just calculate what this is. Now again, I'm assuming we don't have a calculator, so we can't just plug these numbers in. So let's just combine these two multiplications. So we have 1 over 2 times 1 over root 2. That's 1 over 2 root 2, just times the tops and times the bottom. And similarly, do the same thing with root 3 over 2 times 1 over root 2. And we get root 3 over 2 root 2. Nicely, we already have a common denominator, so we can write this as 1 minus root 3 over 2 root 2. Finally, it's not really conventional to have a square root on the bottom of a fraction. So we want to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. So we get rid of the square root on the bottom. So we just do this by timesing the top and the bottom by root 2. So we don't change the value. If we times the top and the bottom by root 2, then it stays the same. But we get rid of the root 2 on the bottom. And we end up with root 2 minus root 6 over 4. So you can try it yourself. Just try timesing 1 by root 2, you get the root 2 there. And times root 3 by root 2, you get root 6. Minus root 6. It's a minus root 3. And timesing 2 root 2 by root 2 gives you 2 times root 2 times root 2. Now root 2 times root 2 is 2. So you get 2 times 2, which is 4. And at this point, we can't simplify any further. We assume we don't have a calculator, so we're done. This is our final answer. So let's try part B now. So we want to find tan of minus 15 degrees. Well, once again, we're going to have to rewrite tan of minus 15 so that we have the sum or the difference of two numbers inside the tan. And we pick those numbers so that they are things that we can figure out the tan of without a calculator. So you might have to do this by trial and error, but you'll eventually hopefully arrive at tan of 45 minus 60. So 45 minus 60 is minus 15, and we can figure out the tangent of both of these numbers, once again, using our exact triangles. So let's use the formula in the, uh, the box in the top left-hand corner to rewrite this, and we get tan 45 minus tan 60 over 1 plus tan 45 times tan 60. So I've just plugged in 45 and 60 for x and y in that third formula. So again, using our exact triangles, we can calculate all these values. And we end up with tan 45 is 1, tan 60 is root 3. So we get 1 minus root 3 on the top. And then we get 1 plus 1 times root 3, which is just root 3. So we get 1 plus root 3 on the bottom. Now, to rationalize the denominator here, we need to get rid of the root 3 again. What we do, and it's a very common method, is we times the top and the bottom by 1 minus root 3. So we need to times the top and the bottom by the same thing so we don't change the value. If we times by 1 minus root 3, you'll see that the root 3s on the bottom disappear. So to do that, we times the top by 1 minus root 3. We just get 1 minus root 3 times 1 minus root 3, which is 1 minus root 3 squared. And on the bottom, we get 1 plus root 3 times 1 minus root 3. Now let's times out these brackets on the bottom. And we'll times out the brackets on the top as well. So we get 1 minus 2 root 3 plus 3 on the top. So that's just from multiplying out this bracket 1 minus root 3 times 1 minus root 3 you get 1 times 1 is 1 1 times minus root 3 and then another 1 times minus root 3 is minus 2 root 3 and then you get minus root 3 times minus root 3 which is just plus 3 and the minuses cancel out so that's the top and the bottom 
maybe even easier because you can see it. You've got a 1 times a 1 gives you 1. A 1 times a minus root 3 gives you a minus root 3. And then a 1 times a plus root 3 gives you a plus root 3. And then minus root 3 times plus root 3 is minus 3. So if we simplify this a little bit, on the top we have a 1 plus 3 is 4, minus 2 root 3. And on the bottom, the minus root 3 cancels with the plus root 3. And we just end up with 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. So finally, we can cancel a minus 2 in the bottom and a minus 2 in the top. And we end up with minus 2 plus root 3. So we've just essentially divided both top and bottom by minus 2. And this is what we end up with. You can try it yourself. So again, it's a bit complicated. Just follow each step, rewind the video if you need to, and make sure you understand what I did in each step. To find these angles, uh, tan of 45 and tan of 60, we used our exact triangles. Thank you.